I'm going to show you how to use GameLab on Code.org to make a simple ball and paddle game like this. Um, it'll bounce off any of the corners of the screen and it'll bounce off your paddle as well to get extra points. And then if it goes past your paddle, you'll lose a point. So let's start fresh. The first thing we need to do is get a ball image and for the example one that I showed you I chose something from the animal library I think I picked uh, I picked this pig uh, so this time I want to pick somebody else uh, this time I'll pick the giraffe token and I'm just gonna rename that ball and I'm gonna make it look like a ball so uh, this probably isn't the best way to do this but it works I'm just gonna grab a chunk of the color that I want. Control C to copy and then I'm just going to drag it over everything that isn't that color. and Paste. And now that I've got a big chunk I'll grab an even bigger chunk. Copy and paste to make my coin or to make my ball. Sorry. Kind of looks like a coin though doesn't it? Okay. And this doesn't need to be perfect, but I have trouble stopping myself once I get started. Okay, that's close enough for now. Okay, so now I need to create a sprite for the ball. Call it ball, and we need to draw it on the screen. Okay, that's huge, and you can see all my little flaws when it's that big. So I'm going to scale it down, uh, maybe a quarter of that size. So a scale of 0.25, and that looks okay. I can still kind of see it, but I think it's because I know it's there. Uh, now I want it to move, so I'm going to give it an initial velocity x and velocity y of maybe 3. Right now I don't want it to go so fast that I can't keep up with it. Uh, and that should shoot off in this direction. Okay, looks good, which reminds me that we need a background to cover up all the previous versions. So I don't know what color goes well with uh, yellow, maybe purple for a background. Yeah, that looks okay. So then the next thing we want to do is make it where it's going to bounce off all the walls. And uh, so for that, I'm going to make a variable called, well, I'm going to make a couple of variables. Uh, the first one is going to be dx for uh, direction X. And the next one's going to be direction Y. And I'm actually going to transfer these variables. So if I'm starting with 3, now I can just put DX here and DY. Let's make sure I didn't break anything in that process. Okay, it looks exactly the same. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to say uh, inside the draw loop, I'm going to say if ball is touching, so I'm going to grab an is touching oh but you know what I don't think I need to use is touching yet because I haven't built a paddle so instead let's just uh, grab a math greater than and say if the ball uh, dot we'll do the x first if ball dot x is greater than say 400 then we want to change the value of the x direction so we'll say dx equals negative dx so we're just going to flip it so let's try that well that didn't work um tell you what let's do the same thing with um the y Oh, I know what happened. We'll go ahead and do it with the Y and then, and then we'll talk about it. 
So if the y gets greater than 400, then dy needs to equal negative dy. Okay, so here's, here's we're going to have the same problem. So let's run it again. You'll see that it's still not working as designed. Okay, the problem is um, we set the velocity x and y. Oh, those are reversed. We set them all before we actually started our draw loop. So this only this code only runs once, whereas we would actually like it to run uh, every time that the the draw loop ticks through. So let's try it again. So this should bounce. Okay, it bounces, but you'll notice it bounces. Um, it bounces after the ball is sort of already gone off the screen a bit. Uh, so we need to change these numbers to maybe 350. Let's see if that looks a little better. Mm, I don't, I don't like that either. Let's try 360. That's pretty close. Like it's within a couple of pixels. I'm going to leave it for now. So now we've got the problem of this corner up here, right? So we need to do the same thing with less thans. So I'm going to copy those and paste them. I used control C and control V and now I'm going to switch to text mode and change these two to less than. And since since this is 40 pixels away from the edge, I'm just going to go 40 pixels away from the opposite edge. Uh, let's try this. That bounces just fine. And up there is bouncing good. So now the only problem we have is that we're just stuck bouncing between these two corners. So what we're going to do is give these initial velocities different numbers. Like for example, if I make this one five and this one one, uh, then it's gonna move uh, left and right more than it's gonna move uh, up and down. But we don't want it to be the exact same every time, so let's uh, randomize. We're only randomizing the initial value. So anything between three and six would be fine just to start and that's going to give us uh, a bit more random interaction. I think this ball could be smaller. I'm going to try 0.15. Yeah, and at that size it could even be faster. So I'll give it the possibility of even going up to 8. Well that's really fast. Now that's really good. In fact, that may be the perfect speed. I wonder what it is. Let's check and see. Ball dot velocity y is currently four, and ball dot velocity x is six. So I think six and four might be my ideal number. Uh, I'm just gonna file those in the back of my mind. I may take these randomizing out and just make it six and four every time. I like that. Okay, so then the next thing to do maybe, uh, this is kind of fun in itself, but maybe make a paddle down here to bounce against. Uh, so in this case, I think I'll just draw one. And what color would go good with purple and yellow? I can't actually think of what would go well with purple and yellow. So maybe we'll just do like, maybe like a bright pink. No, let's do, let's do whatever that color's called. And I'm just going to grab a rectangle tool and draw myself a rectangle and fill it in. And then I'm going to crop this image to get rid of the excess with this tool. And I'll call this paddle. Okay, so now that I have my paddle drawn, I'm just going to add a sprite for it, and an animation. Well, 
Let's see how big it is. So the size is actually okay, but the location is a problem. We want to bring it down here. So analyzing the Y values, they pop up there. Maybe uh, 380 for a Y position. That's pretty good. Okay, so now we need to have some, some functionality on that. We could control with a mouse or we could control with the left and right keys. Uh, let's do both. Actually, this video is already 10 minutes, so I'm not sure I'm gonna do both. Uh, let's just pick one. I'm gonna grab an if. Um, let's try this one. If the mouse did move, then uh, we only really wanna mess with the X. We don't wanna go up and down with the paddle. So we'll just say, um, Paddle.x is going to equal uh, world.mousex. Now let's see if that allows us to move it. Yeah, okay, so now we can move our paddle by moving our mouse. Um, yeah, that's pretty cool. Okay, so now we need to control their interaction. So we'll grab another if and say if. Now I can use the is touching that I wanted to use earlier. The ball is touching the paddle. Then we're going to do uh, one of these things again. We're just going to switch the direction of the ball by saying direction y equals negative direction y. Let's try that. Ooh, that was a weird thing. I don't think I like that. So the problem here is it's getting stuck on that paddle. So I think what we need to do is after we reverse the value of dy, let's go ahead and pass it to the ball's velocity inside the if. So while they're touching, it's going to shoot it back the other direction. Let's see if that fixes it. There we go. Now I'd like to make one alteration to some of our initialized settings. I would like to make it where um, when the ball misses the paddle, um, it doesn't just bounce back up, it actually, you lose a point. This is gonna be related to creating a score. And I can already tell I'm about to run out of time here. So um, what I'm gonna do is this one right here. I don't actually want to reverse the direction if the ball's y is greater than 360. Instead, I want to move and replace the ball to a new location, which is back at the top of the screen. Um, grab the wrong one, ball.y. Uh, and we want to make that, say, 45 or so, just to get past this value here. All right, let's try that. So the bouncing is still fine, and this time I'm going to let it go past the paddle, and hopefully it won't. Yeah, it'll shoot back at the top. So the only thing that's left, and I've got about a minute to do it, if I can pull it off. If I don't get it done, I'm just going to give up. Set a score to zero. If the ball goes past, which was here, I want to subtract one from the score. And if the paddle touches, I want to add one to the score. Come on. And then I just need to put the score on the screen. And I'm only going to have time to do the simplest, smallest version. I got 30 seconds. I'm suddenly wishing the background weren't purple so you could see it a little easier. Okay. So you can see the score there in the middle. Ooh. So I'm at 8, and now I'm going to let it go past this time and make sure that it goes down. 7, 6, and that's how you can make a simple ball and paddle game.